Hello everyone, this is Mary Gregory with MAS Coding Solutions. How's everyone doing? I know we're still under COVID-19, but I want to encourage you to take this time. If you have uh, some time on your hand, uh, maybe your job have cut you back some on your hours because of how the healthcare community is having to do things, I want to encourage you to grow yourself empower you. I'm a, I'm a firm believer in self-empowerment. And what I mean by that is begin to think of ways you can grow yourself. If you're a coder and maybe you just code ERs or maybe you just code out patient surgery, well why not think about why not think about becoming a CCS, a certified uh, coding specialist. Uh, that credential is uh, a credential is actually considered to be the gold star of the coding credentials. Uh, I know the AAPC may have a little bit of a problem with me saying that, but it is considered to be the gold star. The CCS tests your ability to code in a facility type setting, and it tests your ability to be an inpatient coder. Now. I said, you notice I said facility setting. The reason why I said that is because it does not test your ability to do inpatient, but it also tests your ability to do outpatient coding for a facility. See, outpatient coding for a facility is a little bit different. We have a, a payment structure called APCs, uh, Amatory Payment Classification, that is under this big umbrella of OPPS outpatient prospective payment system. Um, we went to that system back in 2000. Uh, it's, it's based on CPT coding. Uh, a lot of it is. Um, so we have to get those CPT codes correct so we can get the right reimbursement. Um, the facilities use modifiers, but not all modifiers. Um, so when you take the CCS or thinking about taking the CCS, I want you to think about it as a kind of a two-part test. You have your inpatient coding guidelines and you're going to have outpatient coding guidelines. Um, with the inpatient as well, you will have, to, it's a lot of things that an inpatient coder does. Uh, not only do they apply the ICD-10-CM coding guidelines, they also have to understand about what we call PSI, patient safety indicators. You have to understand about quality. Uh, you have to understand about discharge status. And we cover all of that in our CCS uh, class. Now, of course, once again, this, this is a prep course. So it will not necessarily teach you uh, coding. Now, I know there are some prep courses out there. Uh, that you can take for 12 to 14 weeks. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, that If you want that type of course, they are out there. This course is going to be a two-day course and it is designed for that person that you are already working in um, maybe some form of health care. You may be a CDI, a Clinical Documentation Improvement Specialist. You may be um, working as an outpatient coder, maybe you work in a rehab facility, and you're saying, I want to grow myself. I, I want to be able to change. I, I want to be able to progress in, in my field. Well, the CCS can help you to do that. Uh, I have had a good many students to tell me, when I told them, I said, if you get this CCS credential, it will change your life. They couldn't believe it, but they called me, they emailed me, they said, Mary, you were so right. Once I got this credential, it just seemed like so many doors opened up for me. See? And so I want to encourage you to think about getting your CCS credential. Maybe this is a great time for you. Uh, you got time to study, you're not as busy. And so I want to encourage you. And I'm one of these people where, you know what, you don't have to get it from me. But get it. You need to get it. If you're going to stay in coding and you want to grow, then you need to get your CCS. Okay? Um, and, of course, after you get your CCS, 
you know, coding is a lifetime uh, thing. We, we are constantly going back over the basics, the fundamentals of coding. We are constantly learning new things in coding. And so, once you get your CCS, that don't mean it's the end. I'm not necessarily uh, promoting you get every credential out there. But I am promoting that you will continue to educate yourself. You will continue to grow yourself. You will continue to empower yourself. And you do that through education. Okay? So, in September, September the 11th through the 12th, that's a Friday and a Saturday, from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., we will be doing our CCS prep. And we will be covering the things that you would be expected to uh, see on that test. We're going to cover inpatient coding guidelines. We're going to talk to you about discharge statuses. We're going to talk to you about PSI and quality. We're going to talk to you about APCs, OPPS. We're going to talk to you about disease processes. You know, the most uh, prevalent one. And of course, we have to talk about MSDRGs. Uh, to give you just, um, you may say, well, Mary, I don't do inpatient coding. Well, that's a way you can still learn about MSDRGs, uh, where you can pass this test. You have to remember, these tests can't test you on every little thing. So what they do is they test you on the fundamental of a thing. They want you to fundamentally understand how MSDRG works. What's a, a complication comorbidity, CC? What's a MCC? We can teach you how to know those things. Now, once you get your CCS, you may say, well, I'm not so sure I'm still comfortable. Take some more classes. Learn some more. But get your CCS. I'm telling you, it will change your life. You know, many years ago, this guy told me something about money. He said, Mary, when you have money, when you get money out the way, it can change your life. And he was so right. He was so right, people. When I became a coder, we didn't even make a lot of money. But the industry began to grow. And I grew with it. And I make okay. And when you have money, it changes your life. The CCS can help you to increase your earnings. And who don't like more money? See. So think about coming to the CCS September 11th and the 12th. You'll need an ICD 10 CM book. You will need your CPT book. Those really those are the only two books you're gonna need. We're gonna furnish uh, some of the other stuff that you'll need to go along with that. But those are the only two books. You know, sometimes I've gone out to different websites and they'll say they're doing the CCS and they'll tell people they need a Hicks Fix Level 2. No, we, we don't test on that. You do do it. Believe me, you do it in a facility if you're a facility-based outpatient coder. But that's not something they test you on. So we're going to test you on what we know that you're going to have. So think about joining us. Uh, the course for that, the cost for that would be $395. Very, very reasonable. Very reasonable. You're going to be you're going to be getting taught by someone to have 25 years of experience in this coding and business. And I'm going to be imparting some knowledge to you, some tips to you, test taking tips. We're going to help you to understand about the things you need to understand, how inpatient guidelines work. What's the definition of a principal diagnosis? What's the definition of certain uh, procedures? When, when is something considered to be a procedure versus not? Everything is a test. I mean, you may have a procedure, but not every procedure is going to affect the MSDRG. See? So we teach you those kind of things. We help you to understand what you need to look for in those coding scenarios. So I look forward to talking with you and seeing you. Uh, you can get more information on our website, www.mascodingsolutions.com. And um, registration going to be out there in the coming weeks. So I just look forward to you signing up for the class and getting your CCS and changing your life.